Hi everyone, welcome back to Kim Help ASAP. In today's video, we are going to be drawing Lewis structures for ions and also learning about the octet rule. Now get your pencil sharpened because we're going to be doing plenty of drawing in this video. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the octet rule. Now we know that atoms are most stable when orbitals are filled and specifically they are stable when the entire outer shell is filled. So the question is, are there any atoms that already have a full outer shell? The answer is yes. The noble gases all have a full outer shell. So let's take a look at this. If we were to look at neon, if I were to do the electron configuration for neon, that would be helium, 2s2, 2p6. Okay, so obviously the s orbital is filled because there are two electrons in it, and my p orbital is also filled because it has six electrons. If I were to add another electron, that would be the electron configuration for sodium, and I would move to a new shell and a new orbital. So let's take a look at how many electrons neon has in its outermost shell, i.e. how many valence electrons. It has two plus six, eight valence electrons. You can see where this is going. The octet rule is called octet for a reason. It means you have eight valence electrons. But let's take a look at another noble gas and see if it also has eight valence electrons. Let's take a look at krypton and see what's going on here. So the electron configuration for krypton we have to include those Ds. But again, when we're counting up valence, because these are three Ds and we have four Ss and four Ps, they are not counted. We have two plus six. Krypton also has eight valence electrons. All of the orbitals are filled. If I were to add one more electron, obviously I would move from the electron configuration from, of Krypton to the electron configuration of rubidium, which would make me add a shell and of course add a new orbital. So you can guess that all the noble gases, one, have a full outer shell, and two are probably going to have eight valence electrons. There is one obvious example that I want to talk about, and that is helium. The electron configuration for helium is 1s2. So if I say how many valence electrons, it only has two valence electrons. But then the question is, does it have a full outer shell? And the answer is yes. The reason why it only has two valence electrons is because the s orbital can only hold two electrons. But at that two electron is at its max, and it is full. So it is a noble gas. It has a full outer shell. But let's take a look at another case, and I am going to clear my page. Let's take a look at fluorine right here. So if I'm going to do the electron configuration for fluorine, 2s2, 2p5, that is seven valence electrons. Fluorine obviously does not have a full outer shell. So if fluorine can gain one more electron, it gains a tremendous amount of stability. So if I were to draw the Lewis structure for the fluorine atom, of course, I'm gonna put seven electrons in. If I can add just one more electron here, then fluorine now has eight valence electrons. It has a full outer shell, and it becomes much more stable. Let's take a look at fluorine's neighbor, oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons. 
it also would like a full outer shell. However, if we only give it one electron, it does not get that full outer shell. It only ha now has seven valence electrons. So oxygen is not going to simply take one electron. It either is going to stay neutral with six electrons or it is going to gain two electrons because that would complete its outer shell and give it more stability. So oxygen with a charge of negative two now has a full outer shell. So you can start to see how I can predict charges on atoms just looking at the periodic table. So if I were to come down here and look at bromine, I know that bromine has seven valence electrons. It would love the electron configuration of krypton, its nearest noble gas. So bromine will take one electron and become the bromide anion. Again, it won't take two electrons because it only needs one to get to that full outer shell. So we have just been talking about anions here, and anions are ions with a negative charge. Let's clear the page and let's talk about cations. All right, cations are ions with a positive charge. And just like anions, we'll see that we can predict what the charge is going to be on various cations. So let's take a look at potassium. The electron configuration for potassium is simply argon and then one electron in the 4s orbital. Now, potassium also is looking for that full outer shell. Now, you might be thinking, oh, it needs to gain seven electrons. But actually, what potassium is going to do is it's going to use the easier route. It will lose an electron. So potassium will lose an electron. So what is the electron configuration for this potassium ion with a positive one charge? It is simply the electron configuration for argon. And argon, yes, is a noble gas. It has a full outer shell. What about potassium's neighbor? Calcium. Calcium's electron configuration is argon and 4s2. Calcium has two valence electrons. Again, to try and gain six electrons is much more difficult than just shedding these two electrons and getting to the electron configuration of argon. So calcium, like potassium, will lose electrons. However, calcium is going to lose both of those outer electrons, and it will end up with a plus two charge. So now you can probably predict what would happen with, say, aluminum. Aluminum's electron configuration. and aluminum's Lewis structure. Three valence electrons. It would like to lose all three of those electrons. And when it does so, it will have a positive three charge. Now remember that each of these elements is looking to have the electron configuration of a noble gas. So potassium, will never lose more than one electron unless it is forced to do so because it loses the stability that it gains from just losing this one electron. Calcium 
will always lose two electrons. Again, it gains stability by losing two. It doesn't gain any stability by, say, just losing one or by losing three. So again, we can use the periodic table to predict that, say, barium with two valence electrons, when it becomes an ion, what charge is it going to have? Barium is going to have a charge of two plus. Now, where this gets difficult is in the transition metals and also here in the F block. For example, iron right here can have a charge of 2 plus or 3 plus. Now this has to do with open spaces in the d orbitals, so we cannot generally predict from the periodic table the charges on our transition metals or our F block metals. However, even just sticking within the S block and the P block to predict our cations and anions is hugely helpful. Now, hopefully you have a better understanding of how chemists can predict charges for cations and anions. Of course, those transition metals still keep us on our toes. However, in my next video, I'm gonna show you what to do with those cations and anions. So I hope you'll join me for that. Thanks so much for watching.